We're asked to find the general solution to the system given by the equation in the form of x prime equals a times x, where matrix A is the three by three matrix, where in the first row the entries are two, negative five, zero. For the second row the entries are zero, two, zero. And for the third row the entries are negative one, four, one. Recall to use the eigenvalue method to solve the system. The first step is to determine the eigenvalues of matrix A. We do this by setting up the equation, the determinant of the difference of A and lambda I equals zero, and then we solve for lambda. So below we have the setup. To evaluate the determinant, it's best to use row two because row two has two zero entries. The result is the square of the quantity two minus lambda times the quantity one minus lambda equals zero, giving us eigenvalues of lambda sub one equals one and lambda sub two equals two. Notice lambda sub two equals two has multiplicity two. It may be helpful to write the eigenvalues as lambda sub one equals one and lambda sub two and lambda sub three equal two. The next step is to determine corresponding eigenvectors for each eigenvalue. Recall we do this by setting up the equation, the difference of a in lambda i times vector v equals a zero vector, then determine a vector v. Recall because lambda sub two equals two has multiplicity two, if we're not able to determine two linearly independent eigenvectors using this equation, we'll have to follow the procedure outlined below. Let's begin with lambda sub one equals one. We begin by setting up the equation for lambda sub one equals one and simplifying. Now we need to solve this system. I'm gonna go ahead and use an augmented matrix. Here we have the augmented matrix for the system and now we write it in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done here on the right. Notice V3 is a free variable. The first row indicates that V1 equals zero. The second row indicates V2 equals zero. And again, V3 is a free variable. So for example, if we let V3 equal one, we have the corresponding eigenvector, the vector v1, as the vector zero, zero, one. This also indicates one independent solution is x1 equals the eigenvector zero, zero, one times e to the power of one t, or just e to the t. And now let's move along to lambda sub two equals two. Again, recall lambda sub two equals two has multiplicity two. So again, the first step is to set up the equation and simplify, and now we solve the system using an augmented matrix as before. So here we have the augmented matrix, and here we have the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Again, notice V3 is a free variable. Row one indicates that V1 equals negative V3. The second row indicates that V2 equals zero. So if we let V3 equal negative one, we have the eigenvector V2 equals the vector one, zero, negative one, and therefore another independent solution is X2 equals the eigenvector one, zero, negative one, times e to the power of two t. At this point, if we try to choose a different v3, we just get a multiple of the eigenvector v2. Therefore, we are not going to be able to determine two linearly independent eigenvectors for the eigenvalue lambda sub two, which has multiplicity two, and therefore the eigenvalue lambda equals two has a defect of one. To find a vector v3, another independent solution, we need to set up and solve the equation the difference of a and lambda i times the vector v3 equals the eigenvector v2. You may want to pause the video and review the notes below. Let's go ahead and set up this equation on the next slide. Again, the equation is the difference of a and lambda i times the vector v3 equals the eigenvector v2. So here we have the setup. Again, notice on the right we don't have the zero vector, we have the vector v2. Simplifying, we now need to solve the system. Again, we use an augmented matrix, which we have here. And now we write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Again, notice V3 is a free variable. From row one, we have that V1 equals negative V3 plus one fifth. From row two, we have V2 equals negative one fifth. And again, V3 is a free variable. So we let V3 equals zero. We have V1 equals one fifth and V2 equals negative one fifth giving us the vector v3 is equal to the vector one-fifth, negative one-fifth, zero, and therefore x3, which will be a third independent solution, is equal to the sum of the vector v3 and the eigenvector v2 times t, all times e to the power of two t. And now we have all the information we need to write the general solution. We have the general solution is x of t equals c1 times the eigenvector v1, which is the vector zero, zero, one times e to the t, plus C2 times the eigenvector V2, which is the vector one, zero, negative one, times e to the two T, 
plus C3 times, using the eigenvector V2 and the vector V3, we have the vector V3, which is the vector one fifth negative one fifth zero, plus the eigenvector V2, which is the vector one zero negative one times T, all times e to the power of two T. This is the general solution to the given system. I hope you found this helpful.